Let me start to talk about my motivation for architecture. This is a mountain gorilla um, in the forest of Rwanda. My family lives there and I've been there myself. Gorillas are apes that are very close to humans, but they live in a much freer and more active than we do. And they are very serious about life. I have learned a lot from them. As architecture office, we are interested in liberating human life from modern style. We don't want to create houses that only protect or cover up living spaces, but rather to inspire people and expand their sense of living. And I'm also interested in bringing nature and architecture closer together. DAIDA 2019 is the housing project that embodies this idea. Half of the house is interior and half is outdoor in general. Architecture is made with vertical and horizontal surfaces, and the nature environment is composed of lines. So we incorporated a, a lot of lines, especially diagonal one, into the interior of the house. And at the same time, created floors and walls in the outdoors. By reversing the element in this way, we brought the quality of the interior and exterior closer together so that they could be felt as one environment. The landscape inside is like the Gorilla Forest I mentioned earlier, with many lines and objects flying around. The residents can freely choose a place to relax and live it in an active life. When the large door is open to the garden side, the exterior becomes a more interior environment with a big wall. Before this project, I proposed a conceptual model of the house, which was exhibited in real scale at the museum. The idea at the time was to make the floor slanted so that people could move and stand more actively. Creating a three-dimensional space, it would be possible for each person to spend time in the house with a good distance between them without building walls. This is a residential project that we are working on. The site looks like a cutout of the edge of a park, and so it will be a part of the landscape of it. The design here is not a three-dimensional space, but a flat one with an awareness of the free and active dwelling that we had explored in the Plebiles 2 projects. In the house, architecture elements such as stairs and pillars are treated equally with other things such as furniture, household goods, and plants, and they're scattered in the free plan, just like playground equipment in the park. This is planning section. Since the children are small, the family will live in a space that is integrated, but divided into countless places without walls at ground level. The rooftop has one shed for now, and there are foundations for the two sheds, so we can add the children's room in the future. Looking at the model, we can see that there are various secret bases and hiding places, just like a park. And the rooftop is connected to the park as a landscape. This is another project under construction. We are renovating an old Japanese tea room into an B&B. We are trying to create a relationship with the garden by gradually losing the rigid post, post and beam space of the traditional Japanese framework. Since it was legally impossible to build an extension to the house, we surrounded the garden with soft fabric to create an indoor-like space, which is stretched out from the existing room. Japanese tea is traditionally enjoyed indoors, but this space is designed for enjoying tea, reading, and just relaxing in the middle of outdoor and indoor space. We are using glossy materials in the renovation. The fabric receives the movement of light and wind in the garden, and those materials in the room reflect them sequentially. So people feel presence of the nature, even they are staying inside. This is another way of bring architecture and landscape close together. That's it. Thank you for attention.